Hello everyone, welcome back to the Zero Football channel. Today you are joining me for a very special news for our channel, and we are going to be implementing an ongoing series that we are going to provide each and every week, which is called the Weekend Recognition. The main purpose of this series is to provide you a quick synopsis of your favorite league's news and match results for the 2021-2022 season, week in and week out. The main purpose of this is because not all of us have the time to watch your favorite matches or just get overall news from your favorite league. So, me and Justin and I have decided that we'd like to provide you a quick recap of what's going on around your favorite leagues, whether it be the Premier League, Bundesliga, Serie A, or even Ligue 1. For the today's video, this will be focusing on the Serie A because that is our bread and butter. The first match of the week 8 of Serie A season took place between two historically mid-table sides, Sampdoria and Cagliari. Cagliari handily beat Sampdoria 3-1 with a brace from Gujarat Pedro and a goal also from Mauro Kakarez, with Sampdoria also getting a goal from Warren Thorsby in the middle of the game. Lower league sides Spezia and Salardini had a very crucial match this week. One thing to note of this match was that there are three goal scorers who scored their first goals of the Serie A season. However, Salardini took an early 1-0 lead with the goal from Simeon Nkunku in the, in the, early, ha in the early first half. However, in the second half, they saw Spezia come back, which saw them score two goals, with their goal scores being David Skrelik and also a goal from Viktor Kolachenko. Overall, Spezia took the 2-1 win and took the vital points with them going forward into Week 9. Genoa took on Sassuolo this week, which was a very general scrappy affair. The main points of this game was that Sassuolo took an early 2-0 lead with the two goals from Gianluca Scamacca, which is his first two goals of the season. Not too long after these two goals were scored, Sassuolo didn't hold on their lead for long, which saw Mattia Destro score his fifth goal of the season in the 24th minute. Sassuolo was unable to hold on the lead further from this, which saw John Vasquez, the young Mexican defender, score his first goal of the Serie A season with a nice assist from Nicolo Varela, leaving the game in a draw of nil of 2-2. Atalanta also took on Empoli this week, which was expected to be a big blowout, and I must say it was a big blowout which saw Atalanta beating Empoli 4-1. This also saw Ilicic score his first two goals of the season with a brace in the early in the first half, and also saw Duvan Zapata scoring his fourth goal of the season. The fourth goal also for Atalanta came at, a, at, at Empoli's expense, which was scored by their own player, Mattia Viti. Empoli also, however, was able to score one goal from one of their forwards, Di Francisco. However, this kind of game was kind of was to be expected, and there's nothing, nothing more else to really know from this match. Udinese took on Bologna this week, which saw Udinese go to 10 men early on in the, early, in the first half. Consequently, Bologna was able to take, take the lead with Musa Barro scoring his third goal of the season in the 60th minute. Everyone thought that Udinese had the game lost because they're down to 10 men. However, fortunately, with the goal from Beto, his second goal of the season in the 80th minute, secured a draw, which is a big letdown for Bologna because with the star power they have, they should have been able to overtake the Udinese down with 10 men. Top of the table, Napoli took on Torino this week, which was supposed to be another blowout like we were supposed to see with Atalanta and Empoli. However, that wasn't really the case with this match. During the first half, there was very little to know in this match, um, being 0-0. However, more, more action picked up in the second half, which saw early in the second half, Di Lorenzo scored a goal. However, this was disallowed by VAR. When Napoli was was had to do the unexpected and beat go 0-0 to Torino, in the 81st minute, one of their big young attackers, Victor Osimhen, scored his fifth goal of the season, saving Napoli from a humiliating draw, helping them earn a helping them earn a nerve-wracking 1-0 win over Torino. The game to watch this week in Serie A was, of course, AC Milan versus Hellas Verona. Now, you might be saying, of course? Well, just because of the sheer events that happened during the game, it was the game to watch. On paper... AC Milan probably had a weaker team than expected. Uh, they're missing some key players, such as Theo Hernandez, Mike Mignon, and also Simon Kiar. This saw some backup players take their place, such as Balo Torre and AC Milan captain Alessio Ramagnoli. Going into the first half, uh, Hellas Verona took a surprise 2-0 lead over AC Milan, seeing goals from Gianluca Caprari and also from Antonin Barak. That said to the players during ha this halftime talk. However, they were a totally different team in the second half. One of the signings of the summer, Olivier Giroud, scored his third goal for AC Milan from a beautiful cross from Rafael Leal, um, having a beautiful header from Giroud. 
consequently, with that momentum going, um, one of the key one of the key substitutions, unfortunately enough for AC Milan, uh, Cassier was able to draw a penalty, seeing Franck Cassie score his first goal of the season with a very well taken penalty in the right hand corner. His belief that AC Milan was able to win this game, um, fortunately for AC Milan fans, that would be the case. Um, with Gunter probably making one of the worst own goals I've ever seen throughout my whole time watching soccer. Uh, the ball came across into the box. He tried taking a, you know, clearing it for the, with, the, with the volley. Um, however, unfortunately, he clipped it with the side of his foot, causing an own goal, which saw Milan earned a hard-earned victory. Serie A fans had a big game to look forward to this weekend, which was Inter versus Lazio first half there was a penalty that took place which saw Ivan Perisic score his second goal of the Serie A season in the second half where he saw a lot of the drama pick up in the 64th minute Chiro Mobile was able to get a penalty securing his sixth goal of the Serie A season so early in the 80th minute uh, Federico DeMarco gets goes down with a little bit of a late challenge from one of Lazio players so with that happening though while DeMarco was down Inter Milan decided to play the ball so you saw Latara Martinez go down the field, which took a shot that didn't go in, and Pepe Arena was able to save. Consequently, Lazio, seeing that they weren't that Inter Milan didn't play out the ball for DeMarco, plays the ball out and moves that ball down the field. So the move down the field past Federico DeMarco, Inter players are getting frustrated because they feel that Inter Lazio should play the ball out. The ball ends up getting worked out to Chiro Mobile, who takes a, a really good left foot strike with his left foot that saw Handanovic parry the ball. However, didn't parry it well enough that it didn't go out, but saw point man Felipe Anderson scoring his third goal of the season, seeing his renaissance come back with Lazio to help them lead two to one. Unfocus Savage scores third goal of the season via header um, that kind of sealed the deal. Now my game of the week for me to watch was Juventus versus Roma, just for the because I'm a Juventus fan and the importance of this game that I have for the Serie A table. Juventus after a poor start needed these points to charge back up the table. And based on the three-game win winning streak across all competitions, they were looking pretty good. Roma is going into this match with a little bit of, with a little bit of a dip in form, um, especially with the loss uh, to Lazio a couple weeks ago. Now, early in the first half, my boy Moise Keane scored his second goal of the season. However, via very lucky means, uh, Deschigio played like I never seen him play before. He put in a delicious cross across the box, which Benton Core got a header to. Then the ball. When I was going across the net, hit Moise Keane in the head inadvertently and went in the net, which saw Juventus take a win in the lead. Controversial figure for Juventus fans, uh, Wiltek Snezny, uh, conceded a penalty to Mkhitaryan in the box. Now, with that said, uh, Snezny was able to come up big for Juventus fans and redeem himself by saving the penalty. In the end, Juventus got an important three points uh, to have them go back up the Serie A table. The tenth and final game of this week in the Serie A was between Florentina and Venezia. Venencia was the newly promoted side, which was the underdog against Florentina, so everyone expected Florentina to win this match. However, that wasn't necessarily the case. Venencia took the early first half lead over Florentina with a, with a very nice goal from Matina Arpanu, uh, who scored his second goal of the season. Unfortunately, Florentina was never able to recover from this goal. Um, it didn't help with the fact either that Sotil got a red card, which made them go down 10 men, so it very hampered their chances of coming back in this match, and ultimately gave Venencia the well-deserved win. That's it for the video, everyone. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this quick little recap of the Week 8 of Serie A. Uh, if you guys like like us to cover more additional leagues, like the Premier League or the Bundesliga, La Liga, Ligun, whichever ones you guys prefer, please leave a comment below uh, so we can you know make, make, make this an ongoing series for all your favorite leagues. 